in one of my videos, I talk about electrolytes and I talk about whether or not they will conduct electricity and I just make a list of them. So I thought I'd do a quick video actually running through those six solutions and show you how they work. I'm gonna be using this little conductivity tester. What it is, is it's, a, it's essentially just a light bulb. It's got, it's got a plug just like anything else, you can plug it in. But what makes it different is that you have exposed pieces of metal here and the circuit is broken. It's protected by this piece of plastic to keep me from grabbing on and electrocuting myself uh, once it's plugged in. But again, if it's wet, all bets are off. And so the electricity cannot complete the circuit so the light bulb won't light. Um, but if I put it in a solution that contains electrolytes, um, those electrolytes are gonna allow the current to flow. So what I'm gonna do is run through a series of solutions to show you with two conductivity testers. A big one, uh, we'll need a little bit more to get this big light bulb to light. And then I have this little cute, adorable pocket uh, conductivity tester using just an LED and a nine volt battery. So we'll start with distilled water here. Uh, again, even, even if, I, if I put this big one in, again, it's plugged in, but it's not lighting up. Pure water uh, actually has very little ions in it. There's a little bit of auto ionization. So very little of the solution is auto ionizing, okay? And so we just don't get enough ions in there. So if I put in this big beaker of distilled water, uh, even I can't see anything blinking right here. Although it doesn't take much, it doesn't take much ions to corrupt distilled water. Tap water, again, is not enough to make this light bulb light, but if we use the other conductivity tester, uh, we will definitely see it starting to blink. So there are enough ions in tap water to conduct electricity. Um, given the distance between these wires and again the size of that bulb, I'm not surprised this isn't lighting up in tap water, but it's conducting. Sugar water is next. Sugar water is a molecular or covalent compound. It does not dissociate into ions. Okay, remember that ionic compounds dissociate into the ions, and those ions allow the flow of electricity. There's the big one, plugged in, not lighting up. If I put the little guy in, I'm seeing a little bit of flicker, probably just impurities in the water or the sugar. So this has not been at all dramatic. Well, let's start getting to things that actually are electrolytes. Now acetic acid I've talked about, I'll link to my glacial acetic acid video. Acetic acid is what's considered a weak acid, which means it doesn't completely dissociate. Only some of the molecules of acid dissociate into the H plus and the acetate ion. But uh, if I take my little guy in there, you'll see it blinking away. There are enough electrolytes in there to cause the LED to light, but the proof is in the pudding. Let's put the big bulb in there. Ah, so look at that. All right, so it's enough to actually cause this bulb to light. Notice that we weren't seeing it any other times, but there's a lot more electrolytes in here, okay? Remember also, the idea of being a weak or strong acid, a weak or strong electrolyte, has nothing to do with concentration, has nothing to do with danger. It simply refers to the amount of dissociation. Acetic acid dissociates a little bit, but enough to cause this light bulb to light. Now on to the good stuff. Most people, when they're doing electrolysis for the first time, they, they grab sodium chloride. Again, it's an electrolyte, they know it breaks up in ions. And, and as you see with the little guy, yeah, it definitely works. So one thing you wanna understand is that uh, the ions are not carrying the electrons across the solution, that's a misconception. I'll do a follow-up video if there's uh, demand for it from you guys uh, to show a little bit more how electrolysis works. We're gonna finish up with sulfuric acid. This is considered a strong acid, even though this is dilute. Remember, I don't care how much sulfuric acid you put in there, it's always a strong acid because it always completely dissociates. One drop in a bucket, strong acid. One drop in a thimble, still a strong acid, just a lot higher in concentration. So here we go, watch this. Huh? Yeah. So again, it, and I can see uh, we got some bubbles coming off here. So we got some electrolysis going on. We're splitting up the water into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. So there you go. So that's the idea of electrolytes in solution. Nice way to test it. Hey, thanks for watching this video. I uh, hope you liked it. Thanks especially if you came from one of my other videos where I talk about some of the definitions of solubility and electrolytes. Uh, check out those videos, I think you'll like them. Again, if you liked this video, let me know. I can, I can talk a lot more about electrolysis. I think it's pretty interesting also. Uh, I just had my students do a big experiment on it, so I can, I can tell you a lot about it. Or maybe they can. Uh, thanks for subscribing to the channel. Thanks for sharing this stuff with your friends. It makes a big difference. Uh, it really gets me excited about producing more content. Anyway, thanks for watching and have a great day.